We uh, appreciate you all being here today. Thank you for the time investment that you're making. Uh, let me begin by reintroducing ourselves. Most of uh, you know us as we've interviewed most of the people in the room as part of this process. Lead Commission put together over the past year really at the behest of the Secretary of Education and the head of the FCC. Concept is a extra governmental entity that would help accelerate what's happening in this very complex market. Co-chairs Lee Bollinger, who sends his regards, could not be here today because of Columbia responsibilities. Myself, Jim Steyer, Margaret Spellings with us, and a huge group of supporters that we should now add all of you to the list. What are we doing? To remind you, uh, we came with a belief that everyone in the room has. Technology has revolutionized everything. It is going to revolutionize education. There have been a thousand flowers planted. They are blooming, but there is very, very little structure to the garden. And there is a role for someone to get in there and help at a governmental policy and market level to help that garden grow and find its order. You know, quite frankly, we're six months into this, and the need is greater. The activity level is greater than we had anticipated. We had to organize ourselves. Five steps. We've spent most of the past four months, with your help, learning and synthesizing. Now identifying challenges and opportunities going to inform. Key element, we've been charged like a term paper with a blueprint to do put out sometime after the election. We don't want this to be a political issue. We want this to be a bipartisan issue, and the data shows that it is. And then is this something that we should continue in the future as a way of helping the market? Where are we? Learn and synthesize. There are so many things to read. We've read most of them, reports, uh, uh, outputs, studies, et cetera. But most importantly, it is moving so quickly, you have to get to the cutting edge. So we're 150 plus interviews into this, one-on-ones with people at the coalface of what is happening in the marketplace. Uh, our observations from that. Enormous, cool innovation. Have you ever walked through the CES show out in Las Vegas? There's always a lot of stuff going on, and there's enormous, cool innovation. Unfortunately, we have to remember, not that many of those products make it to market. Limited horizontal flow. You think you know what's going on. You don't. What has been clear to us is as we've talked to people doing incredible things, they don't know what's being done side by side and next to them. The need for horizontal, real-time information is extraordinary. I've sat on the boards of airline companies and computer companies. I thought those were complicated markets. This is an amazingly complicated <laughs> market. Never have I seen anything like it, and that complexity requires some clarity. The more complicated the market, the simpler the, uh, the moves that the market has to make to organize itself. Everyone is incredibly frustrated. It's happening too slowly, but I hear that in all markets. And we were surprised when we came to see you all, people actually wanted to see us, because there apparently is a need here for some advocacy and, and synthesis across the industry. That's what we found so far. What are we doing today? And how would we like you to invest your time? Today, we're in the middle of this. We need to identify some of the challenges and opportunities and come up with some solutions. We want that not to be our solutions as a commission. We want it to be this room solutions and industry solutions. And we figured the best way to do that was to ask you to get involved. Time, you have a schedule in your pack. We're going to spend some time this morning on that horizontal information flow. What have we seen from our work in our interviews? We're going to spend just a little bit of time on innovator spotlights. And the point is we want to speed date through a few of the interesting things that are happening in the industry just to make sure that that flow is happening and we get a sense of the energy in the marketplace. We're going to talk about setting up the information for the breakout sessions. And here's where you guys have to do all the work. 12.15 to 2, 2 to 4.15, we're going to do our 45-minute sessions that are going to be broken down into smaller groups. And we want to, uh, with moderators, work through some of the barriers we've found, the best ideas we've heard from the marketplace. Will they work? How do we accelerate them? How do we make them happen? And then we'll wrap it up in, uh, uh, at 4.30. Dinner we hope you can join us for tonight. Who's in the room? 
an extraordinary room. We wanted to keep it small enough, yet get a lot of different participants from the industry, from government. You know, I noticed that the, uh, this is all alphabetical, but somehow Arnie's at the top. So the, uh, uh, with great uh, support from the governmental agencies, education companies, we've, we've chosen people who had really interesting things to say as we were going around the marketplace. Uh, big, small uh, content, uh, et cetera. Really a, an interesting group of people to bring the ideas forward. Uh, technology and infrastructure companies. Uh, do we have John and Diana or Janet and Charles sitting next to each other? No. <laughs> in any case, we brought people from all different uh, natural enemies and natural friends uh, into the marketplace here to try to make sure that we as a market move things forward. Schools and universities, we've had people who are actually out doing this to add their voice to the discussion. Sometimes, you know, the cool companies want to talk about the products. We've got to talk about how we get it in the classroom. Uh, clearly a need for private se sector support, philanthropic support in this area. We have some of the leaders in that and policy and research. So a really interesting mix of people bringing different ideas into the groups, breakout groups we're doing today. Big thanks to our hosts here today, uh, Gar Saloner, the Dean of the Business Schools in the back, the Center for Social Innovation here. We called a few weeks ago and said we want to do this. They cleared the, the path to make it happen, and we thank you for hosting Garth at this uh, lovely, uh, and most importantly, we thank the teams that have put this all together, and of course, you for spending your time. So that's kind of what we're going to go through today. We're now going to go into the horizontal information flow a bit, and let me introduce uh, my friend and uh, co-commissioner uh, Margaret Spellings. Again, number four, we want to come out of this with some planks and ideas that we can bring out for a blueprint to get this thing moving. Thank you, Jim. Welcome, everybody. OK, so this is one of those deals where everybody in this room could get up and, and make a speech about this topic, probably better than the three co-chairs. And so uh, we understand that we're humbled that you all are here, and we thank you and, are, and recognize the kind of talent that, that is in this room today. Uh, before we get started, um, and I know you all know this, I do think it's worth us recognizing that today is 9-11. And those of us who, uh, I, actually I was in the White House on that day, and I think we, all Americans know that it was a, you know, a really a catalyzing moment in our country. And all of us who are involved in education uh, have the great gift of being able to do something that matters to our world, to our societies, to our community. And, I think that's really important to remind ourselves of, especially on a day like 9-11 when we remind ourselves that every single day is precious and every moment in time is precious. So um, I hope you will uh, humor me with that little bit of, of recognition. Um, as, uh, as Jim said, I, am I going to be able to work this damn thing? Okay, there we go. <laughs> All right. Okay, I, rem I actually remember this stuff. Raise your hand if you remember this stuff. Okay. Holter, get your hand up. <laughs> All right, so anyway, technology has been with us for a long time. We've spent a bunch of money on it. We haven't had, you know, all, as much as we hope to show for it, but uh, the times they are are changing. Uh, we've had, you know, lots and lots of reports. We did them when I was in office, uh, talking about the E-rate and other things. You've seen them, you've participated in, you've probably written them. Uh, there's been a lot of chatter on this, but one of our observations, as Jim said, that's missing is kind of this synthesis and sharing and uh, integration that we, the left and right hand need to maybe know a little better what the other is doing. So we see this as a, as a real tipping point. This moment in time, this 9-11-2012, as a time when we can really move the needle forward uh, because of some things that are happening. Some brought to us by you all in the marketplace, some brought on by policymakers, and some uh, uh, brought on by just consumer demand. Firstly, broader access. We all know that, that devices of all kinds are prolific. Uh, they're, they work, they're readily available, they're affordable. Uh, so the expansion in that regard really uh, has, has freed us from you know, doing a lot of things that frankly we spent a lot of time and money in the past doing. So we've got some capability trying to figure out what the heck page I'm on right now. Um, so, you know, it's, it's a great time to, to be in this business. We have capacity to deploy stuff. The cloud, obviously, is making things cheap and accessible and easy for parents and teachers and school districts, and that's going to be helpful. 
The other thing that we're seeing a lot of, obviously, is personalization. And one of the things I'm most proud of uh, that No Child Left Behind, the worst brand in America, uh, brought to bear in our schools is this idea that we ought to care about every single kid. We ought to care about poor kids and minority kids and get them to a place over a uh, specified period of time. That's called on us to be smarter and more personalized with their education, to be smarter and more personalized with how we look at teachers and their capabilities. It's caused us to to think about things like assessment in embedded ways so that we can have instant feedback for teachers and for families. It's pushed us to have higher quality content and more data and information that's more timely and more, uh, uh, more useful. Uh, so that's all, all to the good. The other thing, obviously, is I need not tell you, since many of you have developed these things, there's, there's network capability, social networking, the ability for people to talk to each other as never before. And that, of course, can be harnessed uh, so powerfully. Uh, let's see. OK, so you know, but, but continuing with the tipping point sort of theme, Common Core, uh, many of you have, have, are involved with this, I think has really given us an opportunity. Common Core or things like it. I'm from the great Lone Star State. Uh, they're not a part of the Common Core. But nevertheless, <laughs> high standards are uh, the coin of the realm in Texas, too, believe it. And, you know, there's a drive towards more uh, uh, commonality of standards, commonality of, of delivery, and I think that's really going to help the marketplace. You know, uh, Jim talked about the frustration and the complexity of this system where you literally have to sell into thousands and thousands of, of buyers. That can be different now that we have the common core, and so that's a promise. The other thing that's going on out there is, you know this, we've got to do more with less. You know, the new normal uh, are, are flat uh, growth curves in terms of spending at best. Uh, and we've got to figure out how we can make technology be part of enhancing quality, enhancing delivery, better outcomes at, at uh, reduced or, or flat revenues. And that is, you know, 37 out of 50 states last year reduced the money of, they spent on education. And of course, this isn't unique to, to K-12. We're talking about higher ed, too. And then, of course, uh, the new te the ter teacher turnover. Amazing statistic. Over the next 10 years, we'll see a 10% annual turnover. Think about your business if you had a 10% annual turnover. That's amazing. Four million new folks coming into the profession, thereabouts, maybe a little less. Um, and all of them younger, digitally uh, school, digital natives, uh, that can help us make this leap forward on technology. A um, little fun fact to know and tell, uh, teachers know what they don't know. The poll that Jim, Coulter, uh, Jim Steyer is going to talk about in a second uh, that tells us that, the parent, that parents and teachers are a little bit ahead of us. They know that we ought to harness technology better. They get that. Uh, teachers don't know enough about uh, technology. That uh, certainly has implications for colleges of education and our teacher prep programs. They didn't receive training. They had a little. They need more. They have some, but they need more. So, you know, wild support for resources for teachers. Uh, you know this. Innovation is happening everywhere. And again, I think our point or observation is that it's a lot of, you know, you probably aren't aware of everything everybody else is out there doing. I know I'm not, and I'm pretty close to this <laughs> field. Uh, and, and so the opportunities to, to stay smart about what's going on in the marketplace I think is really an important role that the lead commission can play. Um, finally, we need to, we hope that the lead commission will be used to inform not only each other, uh, but the public and our stakeholders as well. Uh, that's why we're here today. You're going to hear from uh, some testimonials and some exemplars of the kinds of things that are going on here. It was, I'm glad I didn't have the responsibility of picking the eight people that, that are going to present the speed dating uh, to you because any one of you could certainly have, have been asked to do that, and I hope you'll share your stories as the day goes on. Change lives. Change organizations. Change organizations. Change the world.